then so now we're continuing to number 30 we have Stonebank with Dark is from his to the top EP and Stonebank is my uncaged producer of the year although I'm gonna say that this is this will be the only song from him that will be present in my best of 2019 so I'm just gonna explain a little bit on why though because Stonebank has been the most consistent uncaged producer for this year because all songs this year has achieved at least a 8 out of 10 rating from me. He also carried Gammer in Crack Up the Dank. And also not to mention how hardworking he is throughout the year. And I also would say that the reason that this will be the only Stone Bank song is because uh, inside my best of 2019, most of the ratings are getting a 9.5 and above. And since that Stone Bank, the other Stone Bank songs are consistently good, but they're just they're just quite not quite there to be inside my best of 2019. So uh, there are other candidates like uh, Slippy, Shark One, and Pixel Terror. They are I did consider them to be my uncaged producer of the year, but several mediocre and luck lackluster songs from them this year made me reconsider that. So yeah, Dark is Stonebank's best take on Electro House this year. It is dark and catchy. I love the little jungle terror bits in the end. And it is it is just just classic stone bang electro, I can't say no. <laughs> Alright, so Aerocord, we're burning. It has grown on me so much from the moment it released. So the biggest reason is going to be Bianca, the vocalist for the song. She is my pick for the best vocal performance on the label for 2019. It is extremely powerful, packed with emotion, and she's the, she's mainly the biggest reason why Burning is this high in my list. And for production-wise, I'd say that it reminds me a lot of Aerocore's Love and Hate EP. And uh, it is very angelic and atmospheric. And it's exactly what I would love to see more of Aerocore's melodic style, or what so he says. Just like Without You, this is just another song that makes me smile. And I really love how simple, chill, and catchy this is. And really appreciate that Stephen Walking and Ifixa, they've collabed again since Matches. And I love this way more than Matches, about, about three years ago. And yeah, especially that final lo-fi trap part, man. It's so, it's so chill. I just love how relaxing this is. It's just, it's just a song that wants you to just sit back, relax, forget all about the stress and problems that has been bothering you for so long. Yeah, it is quite probably the biggest stress releaser song for me for 2019. Just like Riot, it would be a shame if Grant would not be in your best of 2019. And it is also a shame that Grant in 2019 is all about wishes, wishes, wishes. Everyone's talking about wishes. And Color is literally thrown behind that overly hyped song. Uh, I, I don't want to say anything about, don't, I don't want to throw anything against wishes, but because it is it's just a nice song with dreamy vocals from a call and with classic classic grand production but in terms of enjoyment i find color way way better than wishes and both vocals and drops in color i they are really fun and catchy 
and it's much more memorable than his other songs on the EP. So, and especially, oh, that saxophone at the end, how can you forget about that? That's just, that's literally the best part of the whole song. Well, I agree that The Darkness totally deserved to be on the official Best of 2019 album, and but the thought of Particles getting snubbed is, is still quite hurtful. And yeah, Paul Particles, this song is the best song of the LP for me, with three unique drops. And the Psytrance part doesn't sound forced at all, and the other literally speaks for itself. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about the We Are Dust LP. I wouldn't say that I love this LP like crazy because there are still some songs in there that I find pretty mediocre and forgettable. Uh, although the production quality are mostly AU5 levels of good. However, it is, it's still a very masterful LP and Particles is definitely the king of the bunch. No one can imagine Proto Star was like, ah oh, shit, the Monster Cat Best of 2019 voting is coming soon and I have to release at least one banger to squeeze into that album. So he just released Isolation with Hey here and then he got into it and he was like, ah yeah, I'm still worthy. And yet it is a jump up song and I'm generally not so big on jump up songs because I, I give the culprit to J Crescendo by Muzzy or Muzz right now, his name, his life's change, which is, it is a song I feel that is dragged way too long, uh, incredibly repetitive, and the drops, it keeps on going and going. When I was listening to it, I was like, oh, come on, you're not done yet. When are you going to end? And it is just so unbearable and gets tiring to listen to. But no, not Isolation. Isolation has really hard-hitting drops, and they have also the little machine vocal samples is a com com sorry uh, accompanied well to create the whole chaotic atmosphere and most importantly it does not sound long and drawn out so therefore this is a certified banger Aerocord. Well, excuse me as I take some of my time here to just talk about this guy. And uh, he's a legend. He produced a lot of nostalgic songs, lots of early bangers, songs like Control, Alternate Destruction, Surface, even Boundless, although I don't like that so much, but it's, it's still a very legendary track. And he is the trap god and he well deserved that Elias. Yeah, but then now he has the sound EP here. It is a great EP, definitely. It is definitely a redemption in terms of producing actual good quality music. But I can, you know, I can tell through his socials that he did not really enjoy producing these kind of music. He he's obviously really forced, and I understand that he was trying to go for a different route. Yeah, he did mention that he want to go for a more melodic route now, but. Obviously did not impress the community a lot, especially starting with Shadows and the Abomination known as Play Your Part. And he's just forced to just bring back his old style here with the sound EP. He did I can tell that he don't really he didn't really enjoy it a lot. So for now I don't know where is he going going to go after this. I can only wish him luck. Okay, so enough of that. We just talk about the song here, Track 303. It is a definite face face melter. The trap sections reminds me a lot of the old school traps, and the whole complexity of it reminds me of Resistance, another rare record trap banger. And I say that the side trance part is is really creative as well, and I really like that he actually tried something new with his like this kind of old style, I just added some of these new things in it. So I just hope that he's actually passionate about making music. Don't Just don't feel forced, man. Ooh, 
Oh yeah, PT, they got another song here with Millennia. It is not a song for boomers. And they labeled it Sexy Synthwave, and uh, yeah, it's pretty sexy, all right. And I'm just glad that I can finally get some top tier Synthwave songs since Savoy with Let You Go on 2018. And yeah, talking about Synthwave, I want to talk about uh, Desert Star, which has been keeping Synthwave alive on the label really long, and I totally re- appreciate that. It is just that uh, most of them lack some punch and to actually captivate me. And they sometimes sounds like a wall of noise instead of a soothing melody. So yeah, that is that is the weakness I find in Desert Star. But Praise of Terror did the job extremely well, especially bringing in Sarah Skinner's vocals. The whole synth wave is really punchy as well. It kind of reminds me of K-pop. And speaking of K-pop, I don't listen to them anymore. I listen to them in the past, but not now because I really hate the K-pop industry and their songs have been incredibly repetitive and it is just not my taste anymore. But Millennia here, it brought out all the good memories I had about K-pop. It's really dancey, really, there is really great vocals as well. And maybe I have to uh, give credit to the dance performance group by Alien on YouTube. It actually made me like the song even more. Oh, all night. You stepped in too late, man. It could have been this song in the bouncer cap after 2019 and not Can We Be Free. Well, Can We Be Free is not a bad song by any means, but it just sounds like Kuro tried to slap in some bichu like vocals and cover it with some generic trap beat. And I also got tired of the whole flute melody. But yeah, they, I, I like that they actually come up with another good one, and that is All Night, teaming up clockwise. And this drop here. This, this is pure filth. Man, it completely shows their capability of blowing creativity up out of the roof. But yeah, it is it's just a dirty, dirty banger. I can't I cannot say no. And yeah, I, I still love a thousand cuts way more than this because a thousand cuts has better transitions, better progression, and also better atmosphere. But yeah, online ain't far behind either. I was worried Kuro would not impress me this year, but they did it just in time. After some filthy trap, how about some filthy dubstep? This time from Slippy with Own Me. And Slippy, this guy was my favorite artist at 2017 because of it, all of the brilliant track releases in the era. But yeah, he's not anymore, but he's still a top top guy in for Monster Cat. But yeah, this year he did took on some dubstep styles and all of them are great. I probably should have put Quake, the, the song Quake with his the, the, the collab with Dirty Audio into my honorable mentions, but yeah, I probably should have done that. But on me, it, it has a lot of distortion in the, do- in the drops, but it also still sounds neat and tidy, and also incorporating dark atmosphere, which is something that I really admire Slippy about. He, he just scored another big one here. <laughs> <laughs> 